Sup, sup, flappers, welcome to another video. And this is gonna be the first time we ever make a build video together. Chad and I have been sitting here for the past while. We're discussing builds, we're discussing weapons, and I was telling Chad about uh, all sorts of weird Ayaka things, just tips and tricks and little gimmicks that you can do with Ayaka. So with that said, like and subscribe if this video is what you're looking for. I guess you don't know that yet, so maybe after you watch this video, I'll remind you again. Yeah, let's do that. Hold up on the like and subscribe, all right? Wait until the end. We'll talk about this later. Let's start by uh, just telling you guys a little bit about uh, what this video is going to cover. We're going to be going over tips and tricks, some DPS optimizations. I'm going to talk about her talent priorities, uh, maybe touch a little bit on her constellations, but don't worry, I won't dwell on it. I won't bore you to, with the details. Just tell you whether it's worth, whether you shouldn't be going for it, or, you know, your money can be spent elsewhere. We're going to talk about best weapons. Of course, we're going to talk about best artifacts. We're going to touch on a little bit about teams. And finally, we maybe we'll end with pros and cons. And then you guys can decide whether this video has helped you or not. With that said, let's go into Ayaka. Some tips and tricks. And maybe a, a little heads up, right? For people who don't have Ayaka or haven't played her extensively, we all know about her dash, right? Her dash essentially turns you into this mystified uh, cryo vapor that you kind of just move around in this state. Now, the thing about her dash is that there are pros and cons. So one of the best things about her dash is that it gives you extra iframes and it gives you uh, more mobility uh, over terrain, like such as, you know, going over water. This is definitely something that people talk about a lot. Everybody knows about this. However, as you saw earlier, I don't know if you were keen and you picked up on it. Like when sometimes when you're dashing around, you do get caught on by these uh, by these rocks. And these look and now i'm stuck and then now i can move again i'm oh now i'm stuck against this wall again so as you are traveling around the overworld you're going to run into a lot of situations where ayaka's dash just makes it more difficult to uh, to traverse the terrain so that's definitely a downside but the upside is definitely this is going to be a great way for you to iframe a lot of abilities once you get used to using it finally I do want to talk a little bit more about her uh, dashes that when you're trying to turn around, uh, it, it does force you into this U-turn. So you cannot turn front into back like this. It essentially forces to go on a, in a U-turn like in this shape. That is definitely something to be mindful of, but it doesn't kill the mechanic entirely as you can just do this. You can come out and you can, you can go back like that. So it's not that big of a problem. It just takes some getting used to. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about her uh, combo strings. I was talking to chat as well. They were talking about uh, the differences between different normal attack into charge attack combo. So we did talk about the difference between one, two, three, charge attack versus the one, two, three, four, and then charge attack. If you guys didn't pick it up, one, two, three, four is definitely faster. You get less downtime and you are able to execute the combo string more efficiently. That's essentially why I do recommend if you are playing her and you are, you know, into the combos, one, two, three, four into charge attack is definitely the way to go. Finally, I do want to share with you guys also regarding her animation cancel. You can cancel her charge attack with a jump. Now, this requires proper timing and I just did it too late just now. As you can see, that was a good timing. So. If you do it too early, you cancel the attack entirely and it actually is very detrimental to your attack sequence and your DPS output. So this definitely is something that's for more min maxi players. Is it necessary to do this? Definitely not, but it's all about timing. And of course, for people with ping as well issues, you are likely going to find this cancel to be very difficult to execute. But don't worry about it. It's definitely not something you need to worry about because uh, her kit already deals so much damage the little bit more that you're going to be squeezing out of this is not going to make or break this character for you. Anyways, with that said, let's talk about her talent priorities. Ayaka is a character that focuses mainly on her normal and charge attacks. While yes, her burst skill does insane damage, for most part, you're still going to be doing normal and charge attack combo strings. So that's why prioritize her normal attack and then followed by her burst skill. Finally, her elemental skill can be saved for last if you are short on resources. I definitely get them all to level 5 and then work this one to level 8 and then this one to level 8 and then her elemental skill to level 8. Follow that order and your Ayaka is going to be dealing peak damage. Now, moving into constellations, let's talk a little bit about her constellations, all right? So Ayaka's constellations are actually decent. I wouldn't say they are game-changing such as uh, Child's constellations such as how broken Hu Tao's Constellation 6 was. Her constellations are great. Her Constellation 1 is solid, but it's not something that you need to be chasing after, right? Uh, chat currently, I think, is blocking the constellations. So I'll read it for you guys. It says, 
When Kamisato Ayaka's normal or charge attacks deal crowd damage to opponents, it has a 50% chance of decreasing the CD of her elemental skill by 0.3 seconds. So 50% chance to decrease her elemental skill CD by 0.3 seconds. And this effect can occur once every 0.1 second. So this constellation works flawlessly with her passive skills, which uh, after using, you know, her elemental skill, she then followed by gains a 30% boost to her normal charge attack. That's a talent level one. And then when she gets out of her um, dash, she gains the following effects, restore 10 stamina and gains 18% crowd damage bonus, which then just feeds back into her normal attack strings and just feeds back into her overall DPS output. So Constellation 1, as always, well, not always, as recently, has become of great value and it's no different for Ayaka. Constellation 2 says when casting Kamisato Art, Somenta, which is her burst skill, it releases two smaller additional Frost Flakes, Seki no To, which deals 20% of the original Storm's damage. This is so unnecessary that I feel like uh, this is maybe the first character in a while that I do think the Constellation 2 actually doesn't really feed back into her kit as well as some of the other characters. So if you are going for Ayaka Constellations, Constellation 1 is great value. It plays really well into her kit and then you can stop there. Followed by this, Constellation 4, Constellation 6 eventually just ties into each other and just takes her kit to a whole new level. More damage essentially, right? In the end, I don't think it's really necessary to chase Ayaka Constellations, but that is something you have to decide for yourself. If you do have some money to spend, get Constellation 1 and stop at Constellation 1. Save for the future characters. We got Sangonomiya, we got Sara, and we got the Electro Archon coming. Of course, we have Yoimiya uh, later on in the patch, so definitely save your primos for those characters. Ayaka is a very solid C0 and C1 character. With that said, let's talk a little bit about Ayaka's weapons. I do think her weapons are also very free-to-play friendly, so this character is great for uh, free-to-play players. In fact, uh, one of her better weapons is the Black Cliff Sword, which you can get in the premium currency shop for Star Glitter. And the Black Cliff Sword is at times even better than the BP weapon, the Black Sword. I know it gets confusing, both Black Swords, but one is Black Cliff Long Sword, one is called the, the Black Blade or the Black Sword, I believe. Overall, I do think that the Black Clip Longsword is going to be the better option. Uh, but yes, if you don't have the ability to stack it, so when you're fighting against bosses, elite monsters, you're not going to be able to stack the Black Clip Longsword two, three stacks, which definitely hurts its DPS output. But remember that it's also working as a stat stick for you, being crit damage. The five star weapons, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to be the Mist Splitter Reforged. That's going to be her best in slot weapon and it's also going to be the best 5-star weapon for her, followed by the Summit Shaper. However, with Summit Shaper, as you know, there is a gimmick because you need a shield on Ayaka to get the most out of the Summit Shaper. If you don't have a shield character or if your Diona is not built up, I don't suggest you use it. And if you have the Jade Cutter, then you can use the Jade Cutter instead if you don't have a proper shielder. But then again, if you're playing Ayaka, I highly suggest you to build up Diona. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the team building section. But yeah, Diona is definitely Ayaka's best friend. It really, really is. They're almost inseparable if you want to bring out the best out of Ayaka. Let's move into artifacts. So when it comes to Ayaka's artifacts, it's no secret that the Blizzard Strayer is going to be her best set. There are other options, but they're all situational. If you're playing Ayaka, it's best to play her in a freeze team running the Blizzard Strayer just because she scales off of crit damage and you need the Blizzard Strayer's four piece set with freeze to get the extra 40% crit rate bonus. And on top of that, if you're running a second cryo character in the team, such as Diona, such as Rosaria, even Chi Chi, right, or Ganyu, then you can get the cryo resonance really, really powerful. And you essentially, if you're hitting a frozen enemy with the Blizzard Strayer and the cryo resonance, you're getting free 55% crit rate. So essentially making Ayaka only really needing around like 20, 25% crit rate herself and you can pour everything else into crit damage ultimately resulting in Ayaka hitting like an absolute truck. But during situational fights if you ever do need to squeeze out extra power you could be running the two-piece gladiator and the two-piece blizzard strayer. It's better that way to squeeze out more power but as you can see it's 18% is not going to make or break Better just to stick with the Blizzard Rare unless you have the resources to invest into other artifacts, okay? Main stat for Ayaka should be attack percentage on her Sans piece, crowd damage on her cup, and of course, crit damage, not crit rate. 
Don't run crit rate for Ayaka's main stat on her headpiece. Run crit damage, all right? Crit damage is all Ayaka needs. You definitely should be running Blizzard Strayer. It eliminates a lot of issues for her artifacts. It makes it very straightforward. So substats you should be chasing for is crit damage, crit damage, crit damage. I don't know how much more I can stress this. Attack percentage, energy, recharge. And at the very end, you can tack on elemental mastery or you can tack on flat attack. It's up to you, right? Crit rate would be nice as well as a final stat. But honestly, if you are, like I said, you really don't need that much crit rate. You can get 20% crit rate. That's enough. All right. So let us move into a team. So this is going to be a very short section. I'm just going to mention that Ayaka runs best in freeze team. This includes um, running her with Shinchu. This includes running her with Mona. This includes running her with Barbara, with Child. Any way you can to get freeze effects onto the enemy is going to be best. I have an entire video dedicated to Ayaka teams. It's going to be on screen right now. So there you have it. You can watch that video if you want to know more about teams. Finally, Let's talk about a little bit about Ayaka's pros and cons. Ayaka's pros are mainly actually, she can do a lot of damage in a single designated area, but I do feel like that there are some confusions to her kit. For example, her elemental skill looks very big, but it's actually not as big as it seems. Don't get me wrong, everything in the visual effects area is affected, but this area is actually quite a small area. Oftentimes when I was fighting against just local samurais, when they would dash through me from this location to this location, and I would use my elemental skill and it wouldn't hit them. So it's definitely something you need to get used to. The range is actually very, very short. You need to get very up close and personal with the enemies. While at the same time, her charge attack actually can latch onto enemies from a really far distance. So it's actually weird how I find that her charge attack has a bigger range than her uh, elemental skill at times. Although I do feel like uh, they're likely going to be very close when it comes to distance involved. There you have it. Ayaka is a really solid character. I do think that at her current time of release, it <laughs> this is too many characters, people. There's too many characters coming. We got Yoimiya, we got Sangonomiya, we got Sara, we got Bao. It's just character after character after character we're really having to make really tough choices if i were to place ayaka in a particular tier i do think she's slightly below uh, kazuha just because how kazuha enables other characters whereas ayaka requires others to enable her if that makes any sense yes she can play in melt teams as well but then again she herself does not shine as much as if she were on a freeze team Thank you, chat, for joining me. This video has been a blast to make. I've had so much fun playing Ayaka. I don't regret anything. I don't regret summoning for her. I don't regret getting her weapon. I think overall, she's going to be a great character that's uh, that's going to have a very special place in the game of Genshin Impact. And anyone who does pick her up likely will enjoy her very, very much. Remember I said, if you enjoyed this video, if this video helps you, leave a like and subscribe. So did it help you in the end? And if you enjoyed this process, maybe you can join me on my live streams on Wednesdays and Saturdays where we talk about this stuff and we make youtube videos together so i hope to see you guys next time in tomorrow's video until then stay safe and peace peace wave and say goodbye chat bye bye